All right, so I'm out here in the field and we have a tray of wonderful lettuce. It's one of the common things to plant with a paper pot because lettuce is planted over and over and over again on a small scale farm. It's planted over and over again because it's something that's very popular at the market, whether it's lettuce heads or lettuce mix, it's just planted constantly. So it takes a long time to uh, do it by hand. And now that Salanova is at least the predominant lettuce mix variety that I use, that's done with heads, uh, cut and come again heads, uh, multi-leaf lettuce. And that can be done with a paper pot. It no longer has to be seeded and you wait for it to grow. But the system is relatively simple and on my permanent beds, I put a string down, then I take the gritter and I put down three rows because I like it straight so that everything grows nice and even. And I'm able to cultivate very easily and quickly on straight rows. So it just takes a second to roll the gritter down so that uh, I get those straight rows. And then using those rows, I will, uh, I'll plant the paper pots, but I'm going to show you that as I go. So right now I'm going to get the bed prepped. Okay, so the first thing to do with a transplanter, right, regardless of what transplanter it is, is to get it lined up at the end. There's places on my farm I have nice uh, wide paths on the ends and that's comfortable so that you can drive in your car or anything like that but it's also good for the transplanter that you have a good runway into the bed. And the only thing that needs to be outside of the bed is the plow. Okay, and the plow is the point down here, so put that nice and close to the bed, because uh, we want to start a channel right at the end of the bed so that we can start planting immediately, okay? So I just center the line in between the wheels. And I also use the string as a second indicator of where I am, All right? So once I get it, the, uh, the plows at the end of the bed, that's when I can at least thread thread the transplanter. Uh, which is just, just getting it started. Okay. So the spatula just slides underneath. You don't wanna pinch anything, that's important. You don't wanna grab any pots. Um, you want things to slide off really nice. This part you just take off. Okay, and I throw that in the garbage. Okay, and then you grab the end of it. I dig a little hole at the end of the bed and I just take that first one and plant it. I've seen a lot of people, what they'll do is put a screwdriver or a chopstick or something like that. And then you gotta go down and come back and get it every time you need it. It's sort of a incredibly inefficient and little things like that on your farm, they just drag everything down. All those little, tiny, little inefficiencies just add up to so many hours. So, you know, I'm gonna point, I point those things out throughout my course on those little inefficiencies that we get rid of. And once you no longer do them, they just become habit and you don't have to think about it anymore, okay? So you just bury the first one and uh, it should hold as long as you're Paper pots are releasing. That's something I discuss elsewhere about how high the uh, starts should be because you don't want them growing into each other, right? This is a pretty mature crop, but uh, they're gonna be fine, okay? So one thing when you get started, you wanna see like, are you burying them too deeply, right? Is the plow, putting too much soil on them. And these, I'm just gonna bend them a little bit away from it. 
okay? Because once you set up a transplant to, you know, one time, it, you usually don't have to change it much. Um, okay, so I'm going to pull it along and just make sure that I'm at the right depth. Okay, so that's exactly what you want. You want the, uh, you don't want to see the paper pot. You want to see the lettuce and you want it well buried because if transplants dry out, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna die pretty easily. They, they you know, they, there's transplant shock going on. Um, you know, they are being ripped apart in here. So, we want to make sure they're well buried and then the important thing is being well watered afterwards and I, any transplant I always recommend uh, wobblers. Okay now when I get to the end of a row, right, I just rip it right where the end of the row is and then just pull out of the row to plant the rest of the, uh, the paper pots, just like that. Okay, just get it centered, pull it down to start it. Okay, and as I said, you want to get it so that the uh, plows are kind of at the beginning of the row. Right, I'm going to plant an empty one. So, you know, one of the things about paper pots is they're all connected. So if you get one that doesn't germinate, you know, you're going to have a, a missing spot on your bed, which is different than a tray. You're just going to grab the ones that are germinated and you have a lettuce head. But you're usually left with, you know, a few extra, depending on how you lay out your beds. And I lay it out so that, you know, at about 42 feet. And so that gives me, on a two inch, I can... Uh, do one tray and then on a tray like this, which is a four inch, I get two uh, rows on it. And so then what I can do is I can do two beds worth and that's going to be three trays. Okay, but you'll see that in the cheat sheet in the course, side of the course. So those extras I just use to fill in in spots, like a little spot here. Now we're all good. You know, what do you do if they're not buried enough? If they're, if they're getting too buried, you would definitely want to lift the plow by lowering the wheels or the closing plows. You just kind of want to either open them up or close them if you want to uh, get more soil there. But I'm going to show you a little trick to cover them if they're not covered enough. Okay, so you can see that right here we have just a little bit of exposed paper. And so I just use the zipper to come along and just bury it a bit more. Very easy, just like that. It'll just bring in the soil and cover up the paper pots. All right, so as I do this last row on the three rows of lettuce heads, I'm gonna talk about what soil conditions do you need to use a paper pot really well. The most important thing is rock free. You know, there's a all the paper pot transplanter is doing is digging a trench with the plow and then opening it up, leaving it open for the transplants to fall into, and then closing that trench. But if there's rocks in the way and the plow is just hitting rocks the whole time, it's gonna, it's not gonna work very well. But you shouldn't have rocks in your bed anyway. You should be removing them constantly. So if you hit a rock, you, know, you wanna pull it out. Uh, it's really the best thing so you don't keep hitting them. You know, once you get rocks out of your bed, it's, it's a permanent solution. Rocks will not reappear. I know there's a kind of myth that like every winter rocks are pushed up in your field. I mean, th that is a, <laughs> That moves at like the speed of glaciers, you know, it's uh, 
Otherwise, you know, every field in the world would have rocks on top of it, you know, where you couldn't even get past. So they're not going to just keep coming up. I mean, if you get one new rock, you know, that would be a lot in a, in a winter. So once you get them out, um, you're not going to have to worry about them. If you're hitting rocks, it's just rocks you didn't get before. So in terms of like trash on the bed, if there's a lot of long stuff that's just going to catch on the plow, that may get annoying. Um, but small stuff, like I have full of small stuff from the uh, winter cover crop and uh, uh, wood chips and stuff that's in the compost and it doesn't get in the way. But it can be used in clay soil or in um, sandy soil like this. You may have to adjust the height, but that plow is at an angle, so it's going to pull the transplanter down. You know, so when you hit something, I just hit a parsnip, but just stop, pull it out, and keep going. Because if it's a rock, you want to get it out anyway. Um, yeah, just hit that thing dead center. All right, so I planted two beds uh, with three trays. And if you haven't laid out your beds yet, or you're thinking about the distance of a bed, He's about 42, 44 feet. So two inch paper pot, you can do one row. Four inch paper pot, you can do two. So that means three trays for uh, two beds or three trays for an 88 foot bed. It's just something to keep in mind if you haven't laid them out. Cause it's really nice to just kind of finish a tray, but it's absolutely not necessary you don't need to rearrange your farm over it. Um, uh, not all of my beds are like that. So I usually, you know, kind of do paper potting where they are, but it's not necessary, especially with like onions. I just keep going, uh, just adding trays as I go and uh, not really think about it. So it, it's not that important, but uh, you're already saving a lot of time using them. So what you definitely want to do is after you plant it, and this is true of any transplant, is to water them in. And I always recommend water or some kind of uh, wobblers or some kind of overhead because when you do a transplant, you're creating a hole and in, in, uh, in paper pipe, creating a trench and then filling it in. And there's going to be air gaps in there. And you want those air gaps to fill in now so that transplants can immediately start putting out roots have a drink, get comfortable, and you want to reduce your transplant shock. And that's what overhead is going to do. Uh, drip is going to take a very long time to water, and it's not going to fill in those air gaps. And you can't wait for a nice overcast day to transplant. You just got to transplant whenever you are, you know, whatever bed opens up. So it may be middle of the summer, right in the afternoon, and that's fine. But you got to water overhead so that you can water them in quickly, um, get a drink to them, fill in those air gaps, reduce the chance of transplant shock. Um, and at worst, for those transplants to die, you know, you get a few, you know, 10% die off or 20% die off, it's, you know, lowers production really, really quickly. Um, all right, so I'm going to move these tools out of the way. I'm going to put the, uh, the sprinklers on and uh, yeah that's it okay so there's a lot more conditions under which one would use a paper pot transplanter um, 
and I'll certainly cover all of that. Uh, for now, I thought I'd take you over to the onions, which is another important paper pot uh, veg, because in the spring, you gotta plant a lot of onions and you gotta do it quickly. So go check out my paper pot onions. Okay, so you can see all of these are planted with a paper pot early in the spring. You can see they're nice and healthy. They're very happy. Um, I do three rows per on a four inch paper pot. And we have uh, yellow onions. And then we have some red onions. Then we have shallots down here. And they're all done with the same four inch paper pot on three rows on a bed. The shallots, I just drop two to three seeds per, so you can see they're denser. But a great use for paper pots. You know, I can plant this in just a couple hours. It's not a big deal. Two people, it makes it a lot easier, right? Someone to run and get the trays and the other one to pull the uh, transplanter. All right, so thanks for watching. Till next time.